our final evening in California, and I was invited to speak to the pilot group at Google. Because most of the time, the view through the windshield is just glary. Usually, I'll clean it, and then I'll, on the takeoff roll, I'll watch a bug hit <laughs> <laughs> right, where the, right in the center of the lens. I was exhausted, but after the talk, I got an offer I couldn't refuse. So what do you think? Are we going to do this? What time is it? Yeah, we can do it if we do it now. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the first airplane I ever considered within reach of ownership. There it is. I've been carrying that for 15 years. <laughs> kind of have to give you a ride at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never flown an RV7, and it was an awesome way to end this trip. When I started this thing, I never imagined I'd be speaking in Silicon Valley. You said an RV7, oh, that's awesome. That's like on my list. We should fly. We should fly. <laughs> I'm going tomorrow, that's unfortunate. It's here tonight. <laughs> and then get an invite to fly directly after the talk. This whole flight chops thing has been a wild ride. Let's review what led up to this moment. Debriefing my weekend warrior private flying has always been important to me. And when GoPros became available, my post-flight analysis went to a whole new level. Brock and James are filmmaker friends, and we decided to launch a YouTube channel to share my debriefs and other aviation stories. But the channel needed a name. It was November, and I was rocking the most goofy mustache I could come up with, and that inspired James to think of the branding idea. And on that note, I do feel that I owe Movember for inspiring this whole thing. So I'm going to be giving back. My six-year-old daughter is going to help me do a reverse Movember, and we're going to shave my facial hair back to zero. Anyway, a huge part of why this is working is because of the crowdfunding campaign on Patreon. Heather? Hi! Steve. Steve, pleased to meet you. Welcome to Patreon. I'm happy to be here. Let me happy give you a tour around. Yeah. And I actually got to visit the head office with Elliot, one of my supporters from San Francisco. So that was really cool. Brock and James and I are getting all over the place to shoot awesome stuff. The most recent trip was Atlanta. So we're at the Delta Flight Museum. I'm gonna see if I can't crash a 737. I actually did okay, but when Brock got his turn, things got interesting. Ah! Oh! <laughs> we did not survive oh! that. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, back to Northern California. On the way to Silicon Valley, we were invited to have lunch with a bunch of pilots at Apple. And then we stopped for some hiking. So we're five minutes away from Apple World headquarters. We found some giant insects and a rattlesnake. So here I was on the last day of the NorCal trip, speaking to the pilots group at Google about being a YouTube aviator. The side effect of the whole thing, which is cool, was that exactly what just happened here. I've got a picture of an RV7 in my wall that I've been carrying for 15 years. I'll show you, because they get some one of those like, visualize your goal, like carry it. This has been in my wall. There we go. See how old that is? That's the photo. Mine looks pretty much identical to that, but it's blue. I've been carrying that for 15 years. <laughs> kind of have to give you a ride at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Take GoPros. Just go and enjoy it. Really? Yeah. Just, if you just want to come for a ride, that's cool. I would, yeah, I would love to come for a ride in an RV, man. Okay. I feel like I want to shoot it, though, too. I'm struggling. Well, I mean, you can, you can bring one and, you know, pop it yeah, around I know. if you want. But, but there probably isn't time to go and mount, like, no. 17 on the air. No, 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 no. Uh, just go and, and enjoy it. One flight rate only flying and enjoying it. This is the only time I'm ever going to do this. That's crazy. It's a little windy, but not too bad. Um, so. We'll we'll have a look at the if you're comfortable, I'm comfortable. Yeah, we'll go have a look. Okay. And that's what this community is about. Jeff was an instant flying friend. And despite James's uncharacteristic recommendation not to shoot it, I couldn't resist the urge to bring one GoPro. These opportunities are arriving because putting myself out there has kind of like created a little community around it. I think we all do this. We all want to sit at the bar and tell your friend about that flying thing and share a swap a story or whatever. So just kind of creating this sort of vehicle for it has been very rewarding, so I feel like it was a little bit of a risk to put myself out there, because you know, you, you all know what YouTube comments can be like. Right? So what I did before I launched it was carefully look at other flying channels and see how those comment threads went. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. But that's because I learned from their mistakes. And, and, and in their defense, I'm a professional editor, like we, we are filmmakers, so this is, my hobby, but I can take a professional spin on it. Okay, so it's chopper. Yep, yeah, chopper in sight. And we're not going to be in his rotor wash seriously, so that's no problem. Fuel pump off. We're good waiting. Wow, he really flared that thing. That he did. And he's going to whip up a huge. Have you taken off after a helicopter before, like a little one like that? No. No. Massive, massive rotor wash. He's there putting is. down a huge amount right now. Number one kilo mic, caution rotor wash, departed helicopter, it's in the left pattern. Delay is approved if you need it. Winds 280 at 10, runway 31, clear for takeoff. Okay, clear for takeoff, 31, one kilo mic. So how long would you wait or do you feel good about it? I mean, I'm just going to taxi out nice and slow. Tower for tower, here, 6830, Romeo, here, left and south. So we've got a crosswind, so everything's blowing off to the right. Romeo, Palace Tower, proceed direct to midfield, and a right down, wind runway 31. 
broken off. The pre take off checklist is complete. I'm just gonna, I'm just meandering out to the runway here, so we're not we're not on a huge rush. Yep. The four Papa, runway three one, for the option. Okay. Option uh, four. All right, there's full stop. You ready to go? Ready to go. Okay, full rich pumps on. Here we go. Airspeed alive, and away we go. Wow. That's a fast roll. And then it'll pitch, which is really <laughs> <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> you didn't even need to accelerate before you could do that. No, it gets, That's right, awesome. it gets right up and goes. That's awesome. What was the rate there? Was it getting up to 15? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, can, we, we can do all of that. <laughs> yeah, man, you're selling this airplane already. It's, it's good time. And sometimes I get a very tiny percentage of haters that will literally like review. And that's, that's usually what I say is like, thanks for reviewing the voiceover. You've said exactly what I said. I don't know quite why you felt the need to say that was a screw up. That's exactly what I say in the video. In fact, that's like the title of the video, but <laughs> I shared it because it was stupid and I should have done something differently, but it wasn't illegal. It was just dumb. I was lucky because I don't have anything to prove. And I do have help with, with some of my, my mentors and consultants have made sure I don't do anything stupid, like put a video out that looks. Because the problem is when you edit a video, you can easily make something that was safe and innocuous look illegal or unsafe just by trimming something, right? Classic case is if I show an engine start and I cut out clear prop, I'll get a zillion comments saying, you didn't say clear prop. So I'm careful about that. I always make sure the videos have context and I disclaim them also. They're not training videos. It's just sort of sharing experience from the private pilot perspective and focusing on the debrief, which I think that's probably why people gravitated toward it. Because a lot of people park the plane, put the keys away, and just remember that the thing that wasn't that great, they'll just kind of like, oh, I don't know what that was all about. But anyway, but if you don't analyze why that the crash line landing didn't work or whatever was not so smooth about that flight, you just go home, you didn't get anything from it, and you're just going to make that mistake again. Just, um, just sorry, trying, sorry. yeah, no, it's, it's all good. If, if you want to trim, it's on panel now. Just, just instantaneous touches are all you need. Okay. Do not hold it. <laughs> Yeah. So you want to trim nose down maybe, but I, I just trimmed a little bit there. But you can see it's very sensitive. Wow, that is super yeah. sensitive. I can't wait to film more RVs and other experimentals. At the talk, I was asked which airplane I've flown so far was my favorite. I gotta say it's the Stearman, because like we got to produce it the way we wanted to. I had my guys there to shoot beautiful footage of this beautiful airplane. I was flying with my mentor. Things started really coming together for me for tailwheel flying, like starting to get it. The Extra 300 was a plane that I got to fly, and we also produced a pretty awesome video about it. And that was awesome, but it's almost like fake or unreal, like what that airplane can do. Holy shit. Is that kind of what it's like in the RV? It's yeah, pretty, I mean, pretty snappy. Yeah, the RV's, the RV's pretty quick. I mean, it's, it's no extra, uh, but, sure. it's, uh, but it loops and rolls really nicely. Yeah. Just give that a go, nice and gentle, not a lot of pitch. Yeah, I'm being too pitchy. Yep. Need to be aileroning. Cool. When I carry passengers, I encourage them to Put, put their wrist on their leg. Right, because you don't want to be moving your whole arm. Yeah, just, just, just pressures, and I have them follow me through some maneuvers, and we do, just do some Dutch rolls back and forth, and they can see what 45 to 45 look, feels like. So I'm going to maintain this altitude? Yeah, 4,500 is where I've told them we're, we're going to be, so. Okay, I'm going to make a left 360? Yeah, left 360. So about that, I'm not looking at the... And, uh, you, and, and you don't have to pull. No, you Watch don't. Watch your VSI, you're climbing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. Don't pull. Just, just roll into just, it. Just roll. But you, but you do have to provide a tiny bit of pressure because if you just roll in, then the nose will fall through and then yeah, I got you're you. like I got a thousand you. feet a minute down or more. And you're pulling two and a half G's. Ah! Um, you're looking at 1.4 on the G meter right now. 1.5. You're looking great. We're good for positive six minus three. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah. But we don't have inverted systems, just uh, FYI. Okay. And we're still climbing. Sorry. It really wants to climb. It does. <laughs> and because the nose slopes away, you feel like you're uh, descending. How much time does it take for you to do, do your debrief? That is my first step in editing anyways. So I always do the debrief in real time, pausing to make notes. So typically, it'll take twice as long as the flight did. So you, you record all, all your flights, and then if you find something useful, you edit and right. make an effort. I, I record them all for debrief purposes regardless, because at this point, I realize like if I don't, I know something cool is going to happen and I'm going to be pissed off. Because <laughs> some of the coolest stuff I've ever had happen was like supposed to be a routine flight. All right, well, I'll just try an S turn a bit more aggressive just to see if I can keep my altitude. Is that cool? Just that do an S turn? Cool. Yeah, no problem. All right, so I yeah, see a bit negative there. And the other way.
Yeah, it's really touchy it's on It's really easy to over-G this airplane. Like, that's why it's a poor platform for learning to do loops and such. Yeah. Because you can, you can pull all the G, more, more G than you want instantly. I have it in my checklist, roll cameras, and then that's the last time I think about them. Great. From my perspective, I do not want them to be a distraction. If, it's, if it becomes a distraction, it's defeating the entire purpose. Great. Now, when I have these guys with me, I do productions like when I fly the Stearman or things like that. I'm a student at that point. I'm not PIC. I'm making a film. So I am more, probably like 40% filmmaker and 60% pilot, so I acknowledge that I'm distracted. So I don't do that when I'm PIC. If I'm PIC, I generally don't have these guys because what I'm doing is just low key, but I still roll the cameras for debrief purposes and I make sure that that's clear in my mind and anyone that asks me, it's like, this is not me making a film. If it, comes in, if it becomes a film later, because when I look back at it, I'm like, whoa, that's something I can share, then fine, right? Then I'm a filmmaker after the fact, I'm editing after the fact, I'm not a filmmaker when I'm flying. So if you actually want to set up a descent there, I'll let you fly the approach in. Sound good? Just push it down, you're going to reach yeah. power, just let it go. Across the speed, we'll, just, we'll, 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 we'll give her. Uh, we're doing a, a Trues 150, ground, ground speed will pop up a little bit. Um, I, I'll, I will be pulling the power back a little bit, but we're only 20 inches of manifold here. Yeah. I've got the prop at kind of a nice 2400 at this point, so I'll, I'll pull it back a tiny bit. We're still running fairly rich here, so. All right, so what airport is that? That's San Jose Airport. That's San Jose, right. that's yeah. Muff. You guys have airports so close to each other. This airspace is no joke. We'd been talking to NorCal while in the practice area. 771 Kilo Mike is heading back to Palo Alto. 771 Kilo Mike, Roger, advisory receiver 8 is Alpha for Palo Alto. Uh, we're affirmative Alpha. Uh, we just left a few minutes ago. Have 8 is 1 Kilo Mike. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull the power back, throw some carbine in, richen it up a little bit. Um, and yeah, you can put about 1,000 feet a minute down. I don't see anybody else in the circuit? No. Palo Alto Tower, 771 Kilo Mike's inbound with Alpha, over over the amphitheater. Over 771 Kilo Mike, Palo Alto Tower, traffic ahead and two left, helicopter opposite direction on the down, and we'll follow you straight in, runway 31, number one, clear to land. Number one, three one, helicopter in sight, one Kilo Mike. Cool, okay, 1,000 feet, so give us 500 feet a minute down. I'll start pulling the power out. What are we looking for for final speed wise? 70 knots. So how are we going to get down to 70? No problem. Big constant speed propeller. Okay. Pop, the traffic is passing well. Right. Oh, I feel that, yeah. Yeah, line us uh, up. Looking for him. For him. Yeah. Oh, there he is. That was the helicopter spotting us? Yeah. Helicopter spotting us. 280 at 9er. Runway 3 down. Number 2 is back in the experimental. Start, 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 start pitching for 70. We're 500 feet. Yes, sir. So, power's all the way out. I'll, I'll feed the flaps out once we get down to uh, under 90. All right, so I'm just going to crab a little bit there. Yeah, pitch us. Of course, fine. Pitch us through 90 so I can get some flap out. Cool. Okay, so there's 10 degrees of flap. Yeah, that feels really slow. And after there's, there's 20 degrees of flap. After how fast we were going, now I feel really slow, but we're still going pitch 70. Pitch 70. Yep. Feeding, yeah. feeding a bit of throttling. So well, that's a big sink. I'm okay. pitching. Okay, but you're pitching down, though. We're up, we're, 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 we're 86. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, so we're at 84. There goes a bird. So I'm just going to... Um, you got it? I'll, I'll, I'll follow you through this one. Okay. Okay. So we're, that, we're yeah, I, thought, I thought it was a sink, so I didn't want to pull the nose no, out. No, no. With the prop out, the thing comes down like an anvil. Yeah, I noticed that. Okay. So let's uh, let's get the snakes in the basket here. <laughs> okay. 75. A little too much, but we'll pull the power out there. 70. Work the power in. 69. 68. 65. A little more power. And your wheel landing? I'm going to try. Nice, man. That was good. Ah, I bounced it. Let's fix it. There we go. We got it. This type of airplane, when you're in here, these wings are tiny. It's, it, you're wearing it. It's like a toy. This really is like the airplane you fantasize about flying, and it's accessible. These things are not that expensive. This is an RV7 kit plane. Probably the most affordable fun you can have in an airplane. We shot a ton of stuff on this adventure, and it was all because of the supporters on Patreon and help from sponsors. And they're giving away $750 worth of stuff at flightchops.com this month, so please check that out to enter the contest. And thanks to the Google Pilot Group for inviting me down to talk, Jeff for giving me that awesome impromptu ride, and all the other awesome people we met in Northern California. We're definitely going to be back. And as always, keep your flight chops sharp. It really does seem like the perfect balance of a snappy little airplane that you could also travel with. Yeah, no, it's really great. It kind of is the perfect airplane. I mean, nothing is the perfect airplane, but it's um, close. It's, this, is, this, this doesn't suck. <laughs> it does not suck. I would agree with that assessment.